Good evening. Uh, when I was a child in the new Republic of Ghana, my father was, as has just been mentioned, arrested and imprisoned, having fallen out with our increasingly autocratic head of state. Security police arrived at our house looking, so they said, for seditious documents. And so they began searching between the pages of our books. But after a few hours, they gave up. We had a lot of books. You haven't finished, my mother protested. I want the president to know that my husband is innocent. They continued. She served them tea. My mother, as you heard, was an Englishwoman. By the end, they were begging her permission to go. Of course, what was truly seditious, at least from the perspective of an autocrat, wasn't between the pages of the books. It was on them. A concern for human rights, for human dignity, for the ideals of citizenship. These things, among so many others, were nourished in our home by dog-eared copies of Cicero and Dickens, Tolstoy and Wordsworth, James Baldwin and John Stuart Mill, and by the resonant language of the King James Bible. And our family was sustained, too, by other words, written by people in other countries, people we did not know, addressed to our president, to their newspapers, or to us, demanding the freedom of an innocent man. Simply letting us know they were on our side was a deeply heartening gift. It's the kind of generosity that PEN members have practiced over nine decades. Often, as you know, we help obtain the release of detained writers. But even when we don't, we strengthen them their families, and their friends, and we strengthen the cause of freedom. As someone who grew up, sustained both by the vital words on those dog-eared pages and by the compassionate words of generous strangers, I'm honored to have been asked to preside over Penn's work for a little while. One of my tasks as a member of the board many years ago was to serve on the search committee that found our executive director, Michael Roberts. And I'm only sorry that he's leaving as I arrive. We owe him, as Larry said, a great debt for our current strengths. I'm grateful too, uh, as Larry also said, to my predecessor, Francine Prose, who's handed on a presidency that appears to be in very good order. Sustaining literary culture has always been, and will always be, the heart of Penn's mission. It connects our work for literacy with the freedom to write, because the freedom to write is predicated upon something more basic, which is the freedom to read. Literacy, translation, the struggle against censorship and persecution, all of them fortify and enlarge human possibility. And your commitment to those projects helps give them reality. So enjoy this evening, enjoy the festival, and thank you all so much for your generous support.